monologue is a speech delivered by one character, which can be directed to another character in the play or used to collect their own thoughts. In this monologue, Ariel is talking to his master, Prospero, and explaining his actions at the start of the play. I boarded the king's ship. Now on the beak, now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin, I flamed amazement. Sometime I divide and burn in many places. On the topmast, the yards and bowsprit, would I flame distinctly, then meet and join. When you're looking at a monologue or speech like this for the first time, there are lots of different clues you can look for to help you unpick it and understand what's going on. Jove's lightning, the precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary in sight, outrunning or not. For me, some of the things I find most useful to look at are imagery, or the pictures created by the language, metre, or the rhythm Shakespeare is using in his verse, and word choice, by which I mean the selection of, say, verbs and adjectives in the speech. It's like a camera script. Yeah. It's like it's telling the camera what to focus on, whether it's the, the top mast or the yards or the bowsprit. So it, in one speech, you get a very clear sense of this whole ship um, as if it's a, it's the, the, the camera is picking up each of those shots as we go through. Do, we just, do you want to just try it again and, and give us a sense of the whole ship? Physically or Physically, with, the... yeah. with uh, where you are, how far around this this extraordinary huge ship you are running. Great. I'll ditch the script. I boarded the king's ship. Now on the beak, now in the waist, the deck in every cabin, I flamed amazement. Sometime I divide and burn in many places on the topmast, the yards and bowsprit would I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Jove's lightning! The precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary and sight outrunning were not. The fire and cracks of sulphurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble, yea, his dread trident shake. Some of the images are fantastic in this, aren't they? The... What, what are your favourite uh, images? I think, I think the idea of Ariel suddenly dividing himself. I mean, that, what, a great, what an extraordinary thing that Shakespeare gives us, that, that this spirit suddenly becomes many forms. Yes, he's not only burns. one flame, he's suddenly a fire all over the place. Yeah, yeah. And, and I get the sense that there's a lot of glee in, in that as well. Um, yeah, there is, isn't there? And a kind of violence, too, in, the, in his enjoyment of that great big noisy thunderous mm. storm. Mm. Uh, what I love about this, this speech, as, as Ariel describes uh, what happened when he went on to boarded the king's ship in the middle of the storm, is the way in which he uses the meter, how the, the speech rolls through. Um, almost his excitement makes the line tumble on a few extra beats than it normally would. Absolutely, yeah. I, almost every line in the speech continues on to 11 beats, so past the standard 10 of iambic pentameter. And what, it's two sentences, the whole thing? Should we just try it looking at that tumble of, of, right. of the speech? I boarded the king's ship, now on the beak, now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin, I flamed amazement. Sometime I divide and burn in many places. It's as if the excitement of describing this exhilarating experience of being in the middle of a storm and, and running around, up and down and round a, a ship, uh, uh, it's, it, it gives you a really visceral sense of that, doesn't it? Yeah. One of the things uh, that Shakespeare gives you is he sets the whole thing up in that first line. I boarded the king's ship, and then he b creates the picture of the king's ship and what you did on all those parts of the king's ship. Yes. Do you want to just maybe really physicalise each of those verbs and, uh, and allow yourself to land on the ship and then to burst into flame and, and see how the, the verbs actually help you to uh, create that picture? I boarded the king's ship. 
now on the beak, now in the waist, the deck, in every cabin, I flamed amazement. Sometime I'd divide and burn in many places. On the topmast, the yards and bowsprit, would I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Very good. I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. Yes. Which is to try and impress me. Uh, okay. And may, maybe not be, a sh be certain that I'm going to be impressed. So that maybe each thing you tell me, you have to be even more exciting in the next bit because I'm not being particularly impressed by, the, by each of those bits. Okay. And it's the accumulative effect of not only boarding, not only turning into flame, but burst, but sh but dividing and turning into lots of flame, and then actually outdoing Neptune himself. I boarded the king's ship. Now on the beak, now in the waist, the deck in every cabin, I flamed amazement. Sometime I'd divide and burn in many places. On the topmast, the yards and bowsprit would I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Jove's lightning, the precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary in sight outrunning were not. The fire and cracks of sulphurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold waves tremble, yea, his dread trident shake. Very good. That's very <laughs> useful, actually, because it made it active rather than just descriptive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. <laughs>